Hello. Today, I'd like to share with you a short message from the book Real Life Stories, Lighthouse Edition, number six. This particular message is entitled The Penalty for Sin. It's found on page 54 of the book. It says, one day, every man, woman, and child that ever lived will have to pay the price for their sins. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. That's found in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Death, meaning eternally, forever separated from God. Every person will spend eternity somewhere, in heaven or hell. There is no in-between. You are either with God or the devil. At this point, you may be thinking, oh, this is hopeless. I cannot obey God's law. The truth is, you cannot do it on your own. You need help. God does not want you to, to face the fires of hell and the curse of the law. And he has provided for you one and only one chance of escape. Let's turn to page 66 and see how God's love can give us that escape. John 3, 16 and 17 say, For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son so that anyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God loved his creation, you, so much that he sent his son to earth to pay the full price for all sin. Jesus did not come to the earth to do away with God's law. He came to fulfill it. Jesus came as a man in the flesh and did not sin. Not one time. He obeyed the commandments, God's law, fully. He did for you what you could never do. Jesus was beaten, tortured, and hung on a cross. While on that cross, the sins of the world, your sins, were placed on his shoulders. Jesus died for you. and your sins. But death could not hold him. The grave could not contain him. He arose from the grave, paying the full price for every person's sin. And that includes you. It is only through God's love, God's mercy, and God's grace that we can escape the curse of the law. Let's skip over to page, seven, page 79 and talk about Judgment Day. The Bible promises us a final judgment. Let's look at Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. It says, And I saw a great white throne, and the one who sat upon it, from whose face the earth and sky fled away, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, great and small, standing before God, and the books were opened, including the book of life, and the dead were judged according to the things written in the books, each according to the deeds he had done. 
the oceans surrendered the bodies buried in them, and the earth and the underworld gave up the dead in them. Each was judged according to his deeds, and death and hell were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found recorded in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. At the judgment, books are opened. The books contained every good or bad deed of every person. The book of life contains the names of those who have put their trust in Christ to save them. When God judges you, you, will you be found guilty or innocent? Will you spend eternity forever in heaven or hell? Let's take a look on page 96 and see what it has to say about standing on the fence. It says, I was standing on a fence and there was an incredibly large group of people assembled around it. On one side of the group stood a man, Jesus. On the other side of the group stood another man, Satan. Separating them running through the group was a fence. I was standing on. Both Jesus and Satan began calling to the people in the group and one by one, each having made up his or her mind, each went to either Jesus or Satan. This kept going on and eventually Jesus had gathered around him a group of people from the larger crowds, as did Satan. But I joined neither group. I stood on the fence. Then Jesus and his people left and disappeared. So too did Satan and his people. And I was left alone, standing on the fence. As I stood there, Satan came back. He appeared to be looking for something that he had lost. I said, have you lost something? Satan looked straight at me and replied, no, there you are, come with me. But I said, I, I stood on the fence. I chose neither you nor him. That's okay, said Satan. I own the fence. You belong to me. There's a lot more to be said about making a choice to choose Jesus or thinking that you're not choosing Satan just because you say you haven't chosen him. Because if you haven't chosen Jesus, then you have chosen Satan. We'll continue this discussion a little bit later. I'd like to give you some time to think about what I've said today. What the book of Real Life Stories has had to say about living a life that leads to an eternity with Jesus in heaven or an eternity with Satan in hell. God bless you. We'll talk again. Amen.